do you really need to become a ninja to ride on a Kawasaki Ninja? Not really. Welcome back to Motorcycle Brothers. So Rudy, what do you think about this Harley? I have to be honest, it is a beautiful bike. Yeah, right? There's no doubt in my mind that this is just a beautiful bike. What year is this bike? 2006. My God, very impressive. Yeah, because, because of your Harley, I like Harleys a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. Well. Okay, but I'm gonna try to convert you to racing. I don't think I'm gonna. No, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen, right? It's not gonna happen. <laughs> Been there, done that. Look at this, look at the dolly that I have on this bike. My God, it's very impressive. Yeah. We're talking about, about what, 950 pounds? Yeah, look, one hand, one hand. It's amazing. Okay, so it's good to that move become, around. That can be a real handy yeah. if you have to work on your bike yourself. Yeah, the only problem is that to get it out, I need somebody to help me. Yeah, that's because <laughs> of weight and probably the type of uh, yeah. dolly you have. But quite honest, to after riding so many years on racing motorcycles, it feels weird. I think I need to relearn how to ride on a, on a Harley Davis. I have to be honest with you, not, it's not really hard if you know how to ride, if, you're, if you've been on motorcycles, it's just a matter of practicing. Okay. You, you get this, this bike more often, and you, you just get the feelings. You have extra pounds here, but it's not hard, trust me. Okay, so what do you think about this bike, Trudy? I have to be perfectly honest with you. I'm not into this type of bikes. Uh -huh. Number one, my height. It has a lot to do with this, this type of motorcycles, but it's a beautiful bike. Yeah. I can immediately tell you it has a lot of money in it. A lot of, it was invested a lot of money yeah. in that bike, a lot of chrome. It's gotta yeah. be more than 20 grand, I can tell. Whomever had this bike before. Yeah, the, he the, was really, it, yeah, he was a proud owner and took care of this bike like, like a baby. You can uh -huh. immediately to tell. Yeah, uh, it meticulously maintained, uh, very clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can, I know it's got a lot of upgrades in the motor, the outside. Uh, yeah, it's very easy to tell. When yeah, you know I'm very, I'm bikes. very thankful with Gary who sold me this bike. Uh, and um, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of Harley Davidson. But a long time ago, I remember I was in Frederick on a shooting range, and I saw a bike like this, just exactly like this. And I, and, I, and I took pictures and I sent it to my friend Alvaro. I say, if I ever buy a Harley, it's gonna be something like this. And then- <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> and then uh, he called me like a few months ago and say, hey, uh, you know, my friend Gary is selling his Harley. He, he told me he will sell it only to me, but I cannot buy it right now. But I told him, can you sell it to someone that is like a friend to me? And he said, yes, absolutely. So I, he called me and I say, well, let me sell another bike. Do you think he will wait for me if I sell another bike uh, and, and uh, just to buy this one? And he asked Gary, he said, yeah, he will for you. So I put my bike for sale, uh, um, Honda VFR 800, and I sold it in a week. And then, uh, you know, I went and, you know, just uh, got the, the bike from Gary. And I'm sure you're not going to discuss how much you paid for it, but I can, yeah. I know uh, no, it was an amazing price. I can tell you, it was like a friend to a friend, a friend to a brother, you know. So I'm very thankful. The Quite only honest. way, the only way I'm going to tell you this about bikers, the only way that a Harley biker or Harley owner is going to sell a bike cheap, it will be if that guy has issues, health issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I can't ride, can't ride anymore, because nine out of ten, someone that is in good health. And it's just getting ready to buy another bike, a better bike. It's not gonna let it go for any 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 lower than the bike is worth. Yeah, especially when you you know I know the Harley Davidson culture is, I mean I don't understand it, but I know that owners put a lot of money on Harleys. You know how much do you pay for this bike? Back in 1998, I paid 1700 and 700, 17,749 dollars wow. out of the showroom floor. Wow. And it was quite uh, difficult to buy a Harley at that time, right? Well, you can imagine back then, $17,000, it was like... It was a lot of money. A lot of money. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it was 18749 I misquote that it was not seventeen; it was 18749 that I paid for the bike. Uh, back then, to buy something like that for eighteen grand, it was like buying a car. 
It's almost yeah. like the same deal right now. I mean, now. I, I bet the houses at that time were cost Cheap. like a hundred and something. Right, it was- 120, 150, I guess, something like that. Uh, about, the 90s, about, late 90s. About 153, that's how much I paid for the first house. So a hardly cost barely like a 15% or 15% of the cost of a house at that time. Imagine Correct. that, like a, a, a house like that, today costs like 500 maybe? Uh, average house, it all depends where you are, but over 4,000, over 400,000. So imagine 15% of 400,000 is like a Harley today costing $60,000. That was the cost of a Harley at that time. Absolutely. Not everyone could afford to have a Harley, and To right? be honest with you, 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 you've got to be real crazy about a Harley in order for you to go and buy something for that price. There was a waiting list for you to get this bike, right? It was really crazy the way it was back in the 90s. Harley Davidson had a, uh, they, their, their, um, their culture was really different than it is now. The Japanese bikes was not on the market as good as they are now. Mm -hmm. I walked in and this bike had a two, two signs on it. Do not sit on it, sold up front. So you was asked to walk around the bike with your hands tied up here or in the back. Make sure that you don't touch, touch it. Don't touch it. And I asked the, the salesman, I said, what's up with this bike? Oh, it's sold. <laughs> I'm like, really? He said, you see the sign? I said, yeah, okay, now I got it. Um, I said, I really love it. Would you like to buy one? I said, oh, of course. And I like this bike. Well, this is sold, but if you want to buy something like this, have to put your, your name in the waiting list. I said, all right. And how many people are ahead of me? He said, 32. So you will be the 33rd person waiting for this model. I'm like, really? All right, wow. put my name in there. That was the beginning of uh, December 97. We, we went by, went back to, this, and to the same guy and same story. By the end, the first week of January 1998, I walked in after selling my bike. I had a, a 90, 96 Kawasaki 800 Vulcan, Harley Davidson lookalike. It was on a mm -hmm. Harley. Beautiful bike. I sold it for 7,500. And um, I walked in and I said, hey, Mr. Keller, what's up with this bike? Well, you know, uh, I'm waiting for this guy. He's got to come up with the money. Uh, but you can wait for your bike. Okay. I said, and I showed him the money. I said, check this out. 7,500, $7,500 back then is like 15 grand right now. I said, you got my info. If anything, you call me. He knew how much, how long it was going to take me to get home. Uh, the second I walked in back then, there was no technology like nowadays, cell phones and things like that. So you, you only rely on the landlines. I walked in, phone rang. My daughter answered the phone and said, Dad, uh, Mr. Keller's on the line for you. I answered the phone. He said, Mr. Ramirez, what's up? He said, you tell me. Uh, you want the bike? I said, absolutely. You know I do. He said, all right. Uh, the bike is yours, but you got to bring me this money. I said, I'll be there tomorrow. So next day I walked in, gave him $7,500 in cash. I go to my bank and I get the rest of it. They tried to finance the bike but it was the really high interest rate. So I go to my bank with the help of friends. I was able to get the $12,000 that I needed. The bank was trying to give me more than that because the average Harley owner puts at least $3,500 as soon as, the before the bike gets out of the showroom floor, money is invested, more extras on it. I said, no, that's all I want. Go back to the dealership with my check, and I said, here we go, Mr. Keller, gave him the check, he did the paperwork, gave me a tag, I put it on the back of the truck, and took it home. And I, uh, I, I have been very happy ever since. Next thing I know, I'm putting extras on it. All right. Buying this, buying that, putting this, putting that. Uh, white walls, that's, that's a part-time job to keep them clean. <laughs> to keep those things clean, I tell you what, is it? I call it huh? a part-time job, yeah. You have to buy this. Um, it's good that you tell me that. Oh, yeah. White wall bleach that you got to buy special for white walls. Wow. And to get all that dirt off it, you have to scrub them real good. And, and trust me. And then after cleaning the bike, I put a coat of wax on everything. But that's the culture when you have a Harley Davidson that shines like yours and mine. You know yeah. it. 
That's how it let, works. Let me answer a question. I remember that, I mean, I have the sense that some groups, if you don't have a Harley, you won't be able to be part of that group, right? Back in the day, that was part of the culture. Uh-huh. Nowadays, things are different. You see- But there's still groups that there's only for Harley Davis, all right? It, uh, mainly on big motorcycle clubs. Uh-huh. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to mention them. No, no, no. no you know, like the Hell Angels, they, they, all, they all ride Harley Davidsons. Okay. The Pagans, they all have Harley so Davidsons. If you have an Indian, you cannot ride? No. No. Oh, okay. You have, it's got to be Harley Davidson. Okay, okay. The Mongols in California, per se. Yeah. Um, and, and some other, are the other groups that if you're not, if you don't ride a Harley, you're not allowed the group. Nowadays, there's so many groups all over the country. I noticed that people with Harley now, you know, say, you know. To see people with different different name brands are allowed into with the Harley bikes and, and, the, and the big groups that they now have. Like I can mention Lama. Lama is nationwide, actually is international. Latin American Motorcycle Association, they're all over the world. They don't necessarily have to have a Harley. Um, there are big groups in the whole United States. They don't have to be Harley owners to join the group. Culture changed. Things changed. Yeah. I, Nowadays, I, I like the fact that there's no more racism in that sense. Back in the day, I, I think I'd share a story. I had a Suzuki GS850G 1981. I was at this light and two guys with Harley pulled up next to me. And, I said hi to them. They just looked me up and down and <laughs> ignore me. I felt like I felt this big, but I'm like, okay, that's their culture. Nowadays, you can be on a sport bike next to two or three Harley guys. They go, yeah, how you doing, bud? Or if you have a problem out on the road, they stop. Yeah. Harley Harley biker will stop and help you. Yeah. Back in the day, they just ignore you. Yeah, I like that brotherhood. Uh, that's why we call this channel Motorcycle Brothers. Yeah, that's see, that's bringing all the bikers together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we call bikers brothers. Now it's a real brotherhood. Yeah. You see guys on sports respect. bikes. I like the respect. Yeah. Absolutely. And you get that everywhere you go. Yeah. But thank you for coming to more Thank you. Brothers. It was a pleasure Such to be a here. a pleasure to have you here and with thank a, you. such a beautiful bike. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Well, well, well. Do you need to be a ninja to ride on a Kawasaki Ninja? The short answer is no. But if you know some move, won't hurt so thank you uh guys for being here and uh, rudy how do you feel being on a kawasaki i i, I want to take a picture of you and send it to all your friends my god i tell you what <laughs> <laughs> at this age it, it feels really strange that i wouldn't ride this bike for nothing because it, it, this is a backbreaker and i'm so used to uh cruisers than anything um honestly i sit on it and I sat on it because I have to, but if you ask me to ride it or sit again, I don't think I would. All right. <laughs> and I know uh, you don't have to be a ninja to, to sit on this bike, but like we said, <laughs> when, you, when, you're, uh, when you're a real cowboy, you feel strange when you sit on a ninja motorcycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of like a cowboy, Harley, yeah. ninja, Japan, you know? But I do, I do admire these bikes very yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. I grew up with job bikes and I love them. And I have so much respect for them. These bikes, I mean, we see here on the first bike is a CX-9 1994, and it was the first Kawasaki uh, CX-9 ever made. Amazing bike. You see how clean it is, 4,000 miles. And then uh, in 1995, that bike was such a good bike that Kawasaki came and introduced the CX-6R, the first 600 racing uh, model in 1995, and we have a, a, another one here with 4,200 miles, guys. And then we have uh, Rudy on a CX-9 1999. It's a great evolution to the 1994, 100 uh, pounds less, uh, probably like three more horsepower. The bike is super fast, and the sound with the Mossy exhaust is amazing. And of course, we have the uh, Kawasaki Ninja CX-10 2023. Uh, it's the same and that 2024 came exactly the same KRT edition and they uh, on 2024 they introduced like a, a, four, a 40 year Kawasaki Ninja uh, limited edition. I think it's a limited edition, I'm not sure, but it's uh, you know such a cool bike 
we're gonna compare this bike later on with an R1. Uh, you were mentioning that that comparing the R1 with this one, this one look, looks better to you, Rudy? Um, honestly, the colors. Mm -hmm. I, I really love the design. The design. Yeah, on this bike more than the, the R1. The, uh, the R1. Okay. It's beautiful. They did an amazing job with this Kawasaki. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. amazing. The color, the, everything is just perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's my personal opinion. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. A week ago, would you imagine being on a Kawasaki Ninja just like you are right now? Not even a week ago. I never did. <laughs> I never thought I was going to sit on another bike like this, but you know what? It happens and I'm, I'm happy, you know, just, I'm just, yeah, because I'm just yeah. sitting it's here. It's cool to be like right. the brotherhood that uh, creates the motorcycles. Absolutely. It's important to ride safe and uh, like we were saying, you know, probably when you were young, uh, you did crazy things. I myself uh, used to drink and a uh, few times use on rocks riding motorcycles, which is a really bad combination. And thanks God I'm alive, right? But I know many people that died because they combine uh, alcohol or drugs with a uh, speed motorcycle, so right. any motorcycle. So, I mean, it's, it's cool to be surrounded by good people like you guys, uh, the brotherhood, and um, the, the purpose, in my opinion, of a motorcycle uh, group is to encourage one and another, uh, one another and to do things fun without risking our lives. Absolutely. Don't you think? Not risking, not just risking your life, risking somebody else's life. Exactly. You know. The cool thing is that we have guys from the 20s, 40s, I don't know how. 61. How, you were 61? Oh yeah, my God, 61. you look so young. Is that is that the haircut maybe? Um, but not only that, but I'm a good looking. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. So but it's, no. been, it's been so fun, guys, to share with you guys this amazing day. Uh, and uh, thank you, guys, for watching Motorcycle Brothers. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And also, number number one, number two, number three, ride safe, have fun.